I think as a parent, because I had his mum actually message me, I think you always fear for the worst when you know your, your son or daughter or someone you're niece or nephew is not going too well yeah. I think you always fear for the worst might happen and then um, so yeah I've had she's actually messaged me and said thank you so much um, she's also messaged to say like can you please check up on him because as I was saying like with my conversations with dad you always talk to your friends or your partner different than you would to mm. your dad well you're not always but I know I do there's some things that I will tell Georgia or tell my, my friends more um, than I'd tell dad that's Cooper Hoff this October, he's running the entire 1,200 k's of the Heisen Trail for mental health. Coop's big on being there for those around him, and he's been touched by suicide indirectly through friends who've lost people. Like many of us, his experiences have at times made him feel helpless and keen to do something to make things better. He's an outdoorsman and a fitness fanatic who's channeling his passion into pulling off the biggest challenge of his life to send a message that's close to his heart. Welcome to Young Blood, the award-winning volunteer podcast dedicated to young men's mental health. My name's Callum McPherson, I'm a journalist, and this is a platform for everyday men to share lived experience stories and show that no matter what you're going through, you're not alone. Suicide is the number one killer of young people, and changing that starts with speaking up. So let's do it. This episode has been made possible by Pro Realty Property Consultants. Pro Realty is a proud sponsor of the Young Blood Men's Mental Health Podcast and a big believer in the importance of mental health awareness and suicide prevention. These legends swooped in with funding support at a time when we really needed it and it's thanks to them we've been able to keep the show going. If you're looking for a commercial real estate agency you can trust to deliver quality, Pro Realty has a team of experienced professionals with the knowledge and expertise to provide you with a wide range of specialist services. Get in touch with their friendly team today to discuss how they can best assist you and mention Youngblood in your inquiry for a discount. Trigger warning, if you find anything spoken about in today's episode distressing, please contact Lifeline on 13 11 14. Coop, how did you used to view mental health before anyone close to you was open about their struggles? Yeah, so when I was really young, it was something that I sort of looked at and I wasn't sure how serious they were, or actually, if I'm being completely honest, I didn't even know what it was, what it meant. Obviously it had the word health in it and mental. I just presumed it was something to do with upstairs in the brain, but yeah, I never knew how serious it was if I was being honest. Um, do, do you like associate it with mental illness? Like people being really unwell, being um, you know institutionalized yeah. or something like that? Yeah, coming from where I was, um, that was sort of what in year 10, and stuff like that to now, I definitely know, um, and you can see the effects that it has on people. You just know they're not, they're not quite themselves. And then yeah, I've had those mates that are struggling a bit with their mental health and they, some will open up and come to me and say, Coop, I'm struggling, I, I need your help. Some sort of just hold it in and won't, won't come and ask for help. Um, and I can definitely tell those that ask for help, you can tell that they're feeling a little better about themselves, if that makes sense. And you can see those that, that don't ask for help. I can just see they're really struggling. They, they almost want you to go and ask them if they're all right. And yeah, I've had really close mates in either, some that do ask for help and some that, that don't ask for help. And it just makes me upset seeing how they feel and how they just, they find it hard to ask for help. But it just you, makes me upset. you've become the kind of friend that people come to? Uh, I like, I'd hope to say, I'd hope to, th think so um but then that also depends on how sort of this person over here feels some of them some of my mates they're not the biggest talkers so mm. they're the ones that you can see you need to put your arm around i really just need to check up on them they won't message me and say do you want to go for a coffee it's sort of you have to message them um, and see how they're going which is fine i love doing it there's a personal space and if i just don't want to get too far in um that they're like you're now starting to annoy me mm. Because if I do yeah, start it's hard to annoy to toe them, the then toe the line and know where yeah. to, where to stop and and how far to push it. And yeah, definitely. It's, I suppose it's always just about letting people know that you are there for them, but then it's always up to the person to respond and want to receive that help, which yeah. is part of what can yeah. be so frustrating. So, what about yourself? Have you always been someone who expresses your own emotions and feelings, or what was that like for you growing up? Yeah, well, I've always been one that doesn't. There's two sides to me. When I'm around my family, um, my partner Georgia, people that are really close to me, they see everything. They've seen me cry. They've seen me happy. They've, 
seeing me in these weird moods. Um, and then there's people, sort of like the football club and stuff, they'll see me frustrated, but I just don't go into it as deep as I do with my, my close ones. So, yeah, my brother always says we played football in a 2017 grand final and he saw me lose my, absolutely lose it. He says to me that I'm too, what was the word? He said I show too much emotion and then that sort of sets something off in me. I was like, what do you mean I show too much emotion? Like, what's wrong with showing emotion? So, mm. yeah, since then, the ones that are close to me, I'll show absolutely all the emotions to. And then the ones that not so close with, I won't hold them in. If I am struggling, I'd come up to you and say, I'm struggling, I need some help. But there's just that little feeling where I'm a lot, show more emotions to the ones that are, that are really close to me. Has it always been that way? Or is that something that you've got more comfortable with as you've got a bit older? I think it's... Yeah, when I was younger, it was definitely that way. And then um, as you get older, it's sort of the stigma, mental health stigma and everything. It seems like the people around me that aren't so close to me, they're okay with me going to talk to them. Um, and I just need to get that out of my head that everyone's there for you, regardless of who you are, they're always there to talk to you. So, yeah, I'm slowly easing out of that phase of the close sort of circle, the friends. Um, as opposed to the outer world, um, the ones that I don't know as well. So, yeah. What sort of relationship have you had with yourself throughout your life? As you say, you haven't had any major um, mental health related issues, which is great. It's what we ideally would all want. Um, but what has it been like to, to be you? And obviously you've had to navigate all the things that young men have to navigate. Yeah, no, I've always, um, yeah, I'm, so, I'm studying out dread and Everything I've learned at uni is you just need to look after your mental health and everything. My dad always goes on about um, what he says to me is that I'm always go, 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 everything. So you can probably tell that my mind's always ticking um, and all of that. So he just says, set aside 10 minutes a day. Just just go sit outside. Just go sit in your bed, sit on your bed, whatever you want, and just either get up on your phone, um, those like the calm mind, mental health, um, mindfulness apps or just go and sit outside and just stop and think because um, he said with him he said when he was younger he'd always just go 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 and then when there was nothing to do he'd be like he'd feel lost so he said I'm you are so much like me he says and he just said you just need to sit outside and just take it all in so and is that the case for you you're a man who is go 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 what's it like yeah. when, when you do have some time to yourself and you do have some space to think a lot of people that can make them feel uncomfortable what's that like for you i am always go 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 if i am free i'll always find something to do but when i do find times if i've got nothing to do i am guilty and i i will be honest i always find something to do which is something i'm trying to get out of if I'm on a, when I'm on a camp on the outdoor ed and you're just sitting there and you take it all in, say you're in the Flinders Ranges and you take it all in, you look around, you're like, this is just amazing. There's no phone service, so I may as well not have my phone, no laptops, no nothing. You sit around there and you just, you can just feel how it feels on your mental health. You just come back from that being like, I don't want to go as bad as it sounds with your family and stuff and people, I don't, I don't want to go back home. It's how good is it up here? No nothing, no phones, no laptops. Mm. I'm stuck yeah. with the five you can, people. You can always find something to fill in the space, whether that's giving yourself a job to do or it's just scrolling on your phone. But actually, just being with yourself can be quite a difficult thing to do. Yeah. yeah. So are, are you being conscious of trying to sort of explore that and get, get better at being able to just be in touch with yourself and have those moments? Yeah, I'm, I'm really trying with that. For me, it's go outside, go for a walk, and that way you can express your feelings with yourself. There are times where I'll walk, I'll put headphones in, but I feel like that sort of takes away the one-on-one mm. -on -one time with yourself. So if you're, say you've got a podcast in or you're listening to music, you, you're focusing on that noise, whereas the times when I have gone for a walk, um, whether it's with Georgia, my partner, with mum or my brother or dad or sister, even if you're just walking with them or on your own, you've, you're having that time with with them one-on-one -on -one or on yourself, with yourself one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and yeah, you can really feel, um, and that's something that I'm, I need to improve. Um, but yeah, you can really feel, you can just share your thoughts with them personally, or if it's with yourself, you can share the thoughts with yourself um, mm. and reflect on the busy time you've had, or um, I need to do this better, I need to do that better, or 
just enjoy being with yourself and what you have achieved over the weeks. Life's flying by this year, so just the weeks or the days or the hours, um, yeah, just reflecting on them. So you've obviously had a great upbringing, been a happy kid, been a happy young man. Um, what was the point in your life where I suppose the rose-tinted glasses came off or you first experienced someone around you really struggling with something? I won't go too far into it because it's my dad's story, but he, when COVID first kicked in, he um, had to obviously, like, people stop working and everything, so he was the boss, so he had to send some some people on their way. Um, that's another story, but, yeah, he then felt a little bit, oh, like I've set these people off, like they've got no work, I'm in a position where I can have work. Um, so I went away with him up to the Flinders and, yeah, he sort of opened up about just how it was affecting him and all of this. And then I was like, oh, like I've always seen the stories and stuff which are not good to hear regardless of whether you know them or not. I'm on the news, on Facebook or whatever, social media. And then actually hearing that from dad, I was a bit like, like, that's dad. That's someone I've looked up to since I was one or zero. So, yeah, seeing that and just how that affected him, yeah, sort of was a bit like, oh, like mental health really is real. Like, it is something that some people have to deal with and I always knew that, but having someone that was so close to me, whether it was mum, dad or whoever, but this time it was dad. Yeah, so seeing that was a bit like, what can I do here? Like I was only, what, 18 at the time. It's a bit weird when you're, not weird, but me putting my arms well, around dad. and confronting because yeah, it's, a, it's a role reversal where yeah. you're used to him doing that for you and yeah. then not the other way round. But then you, you do become a young man and certainly for me, you become more of a, friend to my dad yep. as well as him being my dad but yeah when we see someone our whole lives as being the the person who's uh, invincible of yeah. course they're not they're just yeah, yeah. they're just human but then you, you see them in a situation like that and of course it can bring some emotions yep. up was that an emotional situation or how were you able to respond when your dad did open up to you it's awesome that he did too yeah because there'd be plenty, yeah. <laughs> plenty of guys out there who like wish their dad would yep. <laughs> share something with them so how did you respond in that oh, i actually found it a bit awkward at the time which I feel like I shouldn't but I was a bit like I didn't know like, what to say I just didn't yeah I was like you're someone I look up to and now you're sort of telling me this stuff I think that was just me the immaturity of me coming out being so young like I just didn't know um, and then I was a bit like oh what do I do do I put my arm around you or like what like he wasn't upset mm. do I just sit back and sort of change the subject and I was like I'm not gonna not gonna do that he's sort of telling me how he feels and everything. I was like, oh, I don't know what to do. Like, we're in the middle of the Flinders range, what, six hours away from home. So I was like, hmm. yeah, no phone service, no nothing. Um, we're up there to hike, so we just, like, hike the next day. And then it's almost like the next day, the conversation, you just, you don't forget about it, but it's, like, pushed aside. And then, yeah, now it's something that I'll remember. And then, yeah, when I think of mental health, I do think of Dad and, and the others that have opened up to me. But, yeah, they, that, that conversation comes to mind straight away. What about your relationship with your dad since that time? Have you had some of those discussions being a, a bit older and a bit wiser? You know, have you had some of those those moments with him? Yeah, not not so much at home, but we've been away. I've been away, helped him with work for a bit or we actually went on another little hiking trip over in New South Wales and not the same conversation, but sort of similar popped up and he didn't have these problems again. He just mentioned them to me about, how they've made him felt, how he's improved and all of that. I'm still sort of in that mindset where I haven't quite opened up to him um, as much as he's opened up to me. And I think that's just still me trying to find that level of comfortableness. Obviously, I've known him my whole life, but I still look at him like, you know, your dad, there's some things which I need to get out um, of my mind and my life is that just because he's my dad doesn't mean I can't share everything with him. Um, obviously, there's probably some things I wouldn't, but... Just, yeah, mum, dad, regardless of who it is, there are, I can share and I can open up um, when things get tough and everything. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, well, what you're describing is, you know, it doesn't come naturally necessarily, especially if you haven't been raised with that continually happening where mum and dad or your siblings are always talking about how they're feeling. Um, it's not easy to start doing that. And I think that's important that you described that sort of feeling of awkwardness, even though it was a positive thing that deepens your connection 
with your dad and yep. means that you then know that you can talk to him about that sort of stuff but it's not necessarily going to be this great yeah awesome experience where you both feel really good about it um but it's just an important sort of step forward and i think that's part of the mental health conversation is there are a lot of uncomfortable conversations and a lot of it's just us getting over ourselves as well with yeah. it like you know from what you've said it doesn't sound like you're Dad was all that uncomfortable with what he was talking about and felt like he could bring it up to you. Yeah. And you didn't have a problem with it either, but because you were younger and you hadn't heard it before, it was like, oh, I don't yeah. know what's going on with this. So there's a lot of just, yeah, getting out of your own way with mental health stuff and saying, actually, you don't have to feel awkward about it. You don't have to feel embarrassed. That's just you that's making you feel that way. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I think for blokes in particular, that's actually quite a big part of it. And we can really help each other to get over it by having those moments with each other and saying like hey yeah i feel i feel a bit apprehensive as well but you yeah. don't have to worry you can just talk about it whatever you don't have to be embarrassed yeah. you know that's definitely part of it um what what other instances have you had of um, people around you having a hard time yeah i've got um so james this one mate of mine he he works away and um he we had his 21st at the start of the year and he asked me if because i'm one of his his closer mates he said to me, could you make a speech and stuff? I said, yeah, no problem. He's always been one that would always message me, always say, and I've known for a bit that he's not going too well. And he'd always um, send me a text and say, hey, oh, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit. And then I'd message. And so when I got up at his 21st to make a speech, the first thing I said was that um, I admire, regardless of how he feels. And I was a little bit like, do I share this? There's some family here. There's some people he might not want to hear. And I was like, nah, this is the one thing I'm proud of him. Oh, sorry, there's heaps of things I'm proud of him. This is the one main thing. He, um, I got up and then, yeah, I've gone, regardless of how you feel, you'll always send me a text. Um, I know that you've been struggling a bit over time, but yeah, the one thing, you'll always message me regardless how you feel, if you're good, bad, um, if you're really bad, you'd always message me and say, hey, I need help or hey, I need to catch up. So, yeah, and I think for his family and his friends and everything to hear that was a bit, I, th I think they're glad I said that because they um, saw how he would speak to his friends. He's not, he comes across as a bit of a life so good, like he's always happy and everything. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, for his parents and family and friends to hear that, I think they're a bit like he's got, the right kind of mates that yeah. Um, yeah will reach out and he will he's comfortable to reach out to yeah well i think that's that's massive being able to say that in front of a group of people and and for family to know that their person that they care most about in the world has friends that care about them as well because i think that's one of the scariest things for parents in particular is when you have a, a son or a daughter who's struggling and you're not sure how to get through to them you in that situation you want to hope that at least they're able to communicate with their friends and that they're going to yeah. tell someone at least um and not just keep it to yeah. themselves and yeah having the kind of friends around who are like really honest and going to be there for whoever that is that can just that can make all the difference and yeah. it's impressive as well being being so young and being able to be serious enough in that sort of a way um i think that's that's really important and it just shows leadership and they're the kinds of people that that we that we need um yeah. and because i think for for all of us but especially when you're around your age you know 21 the tendency to just take the piss all the time is yeah. is pretty high and there's yeah. nothing wrong with that and that that definitely <laughs> probably continues for most as well. So I think being able to square up though when someone's struggling like your mate has and say, all jokes aside, we are here for you, that is massively yeah. important and that's something that we're trying yeah. to get across to, to young guys yeah, as I well agree. to be I that way. I yeah. think as a parent, because I had his mum actually message me, I think you always fear for the worst when you know your, your son or daughter or someone you're niece or nephew is not going too well yeah. i think you always fear for the worst might happen and then um so yeah i've had she's actually messaged me and said thank you so much um she's also messaged to say like can you please check up on him because as i was saying like with my conversations with dad you always talk to your friends or your partner different than you would to mm. your dad well you're not always but i know i do there's some things that i will tell georgia or tell my fa my friends more um, than i'd tell dad and mum 
and even my brother and sister. So, yeah, I think for any parent to message a friend, um, sorry, your kid's friend, um, I think that takes a lot, a lot of courage too, um, for them to actually message and say, hey, can you please check up or do you know more than what, what I know sort of, sort of thing, just to make sure that you, your kid's all right. It's important to look after our mental health just like our physical health and AG1 is the perfect supplement to help take care of both. Just one daily scoop of AG1 covers all your nutritional bases with 75 vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, adaptogens, a greens blend and whole food ingredients. You can count on this tasty mix to boost your energy, increase mental clarity, help you get better sleep, improve digestion and pep up your immune system. Plus, it's super simple to make part of your morning routine, all for the price of coffee. You may know producing this podcast is all volunteer and I have to pay for studio time and editing to keep bringing you these episodes. Every dollar we make from this partnership will go towards helping to cover production costs, so it's an awesome way to support your health and contribute to young men's mental health all in one. If you're looking for a simpler and cost-effective supplement routine, AG1 is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash youngblood. That's drinkag1.com slash youngblood. Check it out. And were you always comfortable being that kind of mate who could ask their mate if they were doing all right or is that something that's come naturally? to you or have you just sort of had to man up and, yeah. and try to be that guy? There definitely has been times. So, well, right now, Georgia and I, so my partner and I are very, we'll always message people um, if we know they're not going too well. That's something that we really sort of try to do. And strive Where's to that do. come from? I don't actually know. It must be, so Shane and Louise, George's parents, must be like their family or my mum and dad's family side of things. They'll always... Um, yeah, message like recently my grand, so mum's mum, they got back from a holiday the other week and she's just, because I worked with my grandpa, so I was over there and she's just come up straight away, put her arms around me and hugged me. I was like, you always like, yeah, we like hugging, but what's going on here? And then she said, I, you just, she hugged me and sort of going, you just don't know what's going to happen. You don't know when the last time you're going to see, when the last time I'm going to see you, the last time you're going to see anyone. So every time I see you now, I want to hug you. I was like, like that's fine. Like a hug, won't like a hug's fine. It's not going to take much. But I was like, I wonder why she's all of a sudden started thinking like that. So I think that must just be a family side. The way I've been brought up, the way George has been brought up, sort of side. So yeah, we've always tried to message people when they're not going well, or you message to catch up. Um, it is something that if you're working five days a week, I play football. She plays netball on Saturday. Sundays you're like. I've got 12 hours here, like, what am I going to do? You sort of need a bit of time for yourself. Mm. But then at the same time, you're like, maybe this one text is the one thing that's going to hold them together, the, the people that are struggling. So might make their day, might make their week, just sending them a text. So, yeah, that's something that, that we try. And when I was younger, it was a bit of a, I think, coming from the hills, sort of that tough, like, you know, what young young boys are but like. you reckon sort of thing. even more so we're just not really talking about anything yeah yeah no back when I was at school not many people would say how they're going regardless of mm. whether you are struggling or whether you are going well um do you feel like that's changing I'm not I've spent a bit of time in schools um I'm not sure I haven't been able to pick the those guys yet with how they're going um I don't know whether that's the boys talking to other classmates whether they're girls or boys opening up if they're struggling I've had a few come to me um, when I have been working there um, on camps and stuff and say look I'm not going well um, but then again I don't know if that's because we're we're walking 25 kilometers a day and they don't like walking or it's, <laughs> right. or it's because they're actually not going well and I think in that situation regardless of whether it's because they don't like walking or because they are struggling I think you still need to treat it the same sort of way because, yeah, a week being away, if you don't like walking, you're walking 20 k's a day, that can lead to the same sort of outcome in the end, I guess. So, yeah, just treating it the same sort of way is important for me. That's something I try and do. Mm. So it was harder for you when you were when you were younger and you're from a sort of community where, like, perhaps, I don't know if this is true with the with the hills or the city or not, it's probably just, <laughs> just everywhere, yeah. but no one really wanted to, to open up about things. Has there been any suicide in your community? 
Oh, I didn't know him, but there, well, I did, but not, he was a couple of years below me. There was, um, yeah, one, we were in home group at school and they just stopped and read it, read out the, the form and I was like, oh, wow. And then after that, the school was flat, regardless of whether you knew him or not. Yeah, so that was, that was probably actually the first encounter I had with it and can't believe, I think, can't believe someone in what, year nine or something, year eight would even think about that. I was like, wow. And that's when I think the school started to slowly go up a bit with offering support um, and everything. And yeah, that I just couldn't believe that someone so young and everything that you'd even think about it, but must show how lack of support there was from, it even f makes me feel guilty, a lack of support from us at the school, a lack of support from the school, making sure from like the school lets him know or lets us know how important it is to reach out and ask for help if you're struggling. So definitely though, that would have been 2017 maybe and seeing that the amount of times I see it now, here's the number, I'm not quite sure what the number is, but ask for help, here's a number to reach out and ask for help if you need and it's definitely going up, up and up and up and it's a big thing now I reckon is if you're not well, speak to someone or um, yeah, the men's mental health and everything. Yeah, so you feel like the language and the conversation around mental health changing just in terms of how much we hear about it and especially blokes in particular how they speak about it from when you were say 2017 or um, in school to now how do you feel things are progressing do you reckon it's going in the right direction because we know that the the statistics are still sort of the same and if we focus on that that's pretty yeah. pretty depressing and can get you down to see that the, there's still nine people a day in Australia dying by suicide and seven of them are men. Um, but how do you think we're going in terms of where we're going um, mental health wise? Back when I was younger, it was always man up sort of, or you'll be right, just all of that. But now actually seeing that, and I've had people actually pull other people up when you go, oh, just come on, just man up. Like it's only you've only just ended it with your, your girlfriend, you've only been with her for three years, but that's actually a big thing to some people. Mm. Like, instead of saying man up, I've had some girls that will actually pull some guys up for saying man up, and they just, it's just not, I, I feel it's just not the right thing to say, regardless of um, whether you are male, whether you are female, I think it should be treated the same way. Um, obviously with the statistics of the, what was it, one in nine, the seven men, seven of, uh, yeah, seven of that nine are men. So that is definitely alarming, but I reckon it, yeah, like I said, it definitely is going on the um, right way. It's something must be missing though, to have still that many people still taking their life mm. in a day, but. So yeah. if, we're not, if we're not saying man up, what, what are we saying instead? Or for you personally, when someone comes to you and says, I'm struggling with this, or I just feel like I need to tell some, someone about this, what do you do? How do you respond to that? It is a tough one. My immediate thought is you just sort of want to put your arm around them and everything. Um, like I said with dad, you just want to put your arm around, but then I don't want to sort of, yeah, take away their personal space too much and keep messaging and all that. But yeah, I just want to, it's hard because you're not in their situation. So I want to say like, I understand how you feel and all that, but do I really understand how they feel? I'd like to think I do, but... What have you done that's worked well in the past? You can't, so I've messaged and I've gone, catch up, some like to play, just have a kick of the football actually, play golf, go and do that with them, but then you're with them for three hours and then the minute you walk away, you're like, oh, well, I don't actually know if they're feeling any better. Like it still might, they might've played golf, they might feel good for three hours and then it's like, because you've gone away, they're back down mm. to square one, how they were at the start. I like to keep messaging them and keep catching up, but yeah, you got work that gets in the way and everything. And um, have you had times where people have said that the way you were there for them that did help? Yeah, we've had a few. Um, so this is yeah, my partner and I. We both um, kept checking in, and then he actually messaged us and said like, "Thank you so much. You're the only one that is sort of actually asking." Some just assume that because it's been a month that I feel good after a month. And then I said to George, I said, it could take could take years until they feel good. So it might it might just not be a month thing. It might be, yeah, two years. So we still need a 
keep messaging. Um, obviously, we can't we can't tell him how to to go about it because we're not in that situation. But everyone's everyone's different. So there'll be some people who just going and having a hit of golf with them or kicking the footy and not talking about it at all is actually going to be helpful. Yeah. And that's what they want. Uh, and then there'll be people who just want to tell you everything about what's going on um, and just want to want you to listen and want to tell someone. And then there'll be people who actually really want you to try and tell them what they should do. So everyone's everyone's different. What the, the consistent thing with it though is just like you said, you put your arm around someone yeah. or <laughs> metaphorically just be there for them and listen to them. And then what we always say on this show is what, do you need from me yep. you know ask them because they'll tell you yep. they'll be able to tell you and uh what you're talking about is trying to draw the line between showing people that you care and wanting them to know that people care about them which is pivotal but then also it's not your responsibility yeah. it's never your responsibility it's always we're always responsible for ourselves so you can't think oh i'm worrying worrying about this person constantly and i need to message them all the time and check up on them all the yep. time and not saying that you you shouldn't do that but it's not it's not down to you yeah you know you, you it's sort of like it's always a relationship and it's always meeting each other halfway yeah and i think being a good mate or being a good family member or colleague or teammate or whatever it is is noticing that someone might be struggling going and bringing it up with them and letting them know that you genuinely are there for them and you can do as much as you can for them and ask them what you might be able to do that might help and then check in after that. And that's pretty much all we can do. And sometimes that, that's frustrating or scary for us if you can see that that person um, really isn't opening up and obviously is struggling more than they're letting on. And all we can do is keep trying to get through to them. Um, but it's always yeah. it's up to the person. It's not up to us to, yeah. to do it. But it sounds like you're doing a a lot just by wanting to send those messages and you know what it's like at the end of the day when you're tired and you've got peeps going on and you've got your own friends and your own relationships happening and then there might be someone that you're sort of mates with sort of not who you get an inkling might be struggling and a lot yeah. of the time you're going to be like oh, I can't be bothered doing yeah. this conversation and it's not always down to you to go and do that and you shouldn't feel bad if you don't do it but like you said it can make a massive difference and yeah. being that kind of person if you're going to be that kind of person that can the flow on effect can can be huge and it doesn't take away too much from us either you've just got to be able to also like you said recharge your own battery yeah. and not run yourself ragged yeah. trying to chase after everyone making sure everyone's okay and I've also seeing that that can be a bit of a defense sometimes where as long as we're worrying about everyone else we're not thinking about ourselves as well yeah. so it can be a bit of a cover. How have you dealt with, because you said you're an aspirational footy player and quite a good footy player, and then you've had these recurrent injuries with your shoulders popping out again and again, and so that's sort of buggered up your footy aspirations. That's a pretty rough thing. I'm guessing you played footy pretty much your whole life. Yeah, since I was a kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was the same um, with basketball when I used to play, and having that that taken away, that, that hurts yeah. quite a bit. How have you dealt with that? Did you just sort of in, internalise it or have you had tears over that? How have you done, dealt with that? Yeah, that really hurt me. So yeah, having to stop playing something I'd loved because of some shoulder operations and reconstructions. Um, I did, that was sort of what I was saying. It was only a couple of years after talking to dad. So I did, cause I was still pretty young and didn't understand all this stuff. I was like, when I got these thoughts, I was like, like what even are these thoughts? But they were nothing bad, but then you just try and keep these emotions to yourself. Um, I think I even hid it from mum and dad a bit. I was like, I don't even want to go and watch football. Um, and it's something, it's not as major as some other things. So it's just it's just a sport. But yeah, to be training so hard and dedicating everything to this sport to then pop my shoulder out and then that's it. So yeah, there were times where I didn't even want to go watch football, didn't want to go play football. Well, I mean, I couldn't. Didn't even want to go kick the footy. Um, and then seeing Sturt won the flag in 2020, I think, or got very close, and then Handorf, my low at the club I play at now, won the flag, and I was the runner for Handorf. I was like, well, if I'm being honest, this sucks. I was like, mm. can't play. I don't even feel involved because I'm the runner. 
well, I was thinking I was a runner for a couple of games. I was like, I don't even feel involved. Like everyone's out afterwards in the change rooms having a beer. I'm like, I feel like I shouldn't even be in the change rooms because I'm just the runner and I could play. I could be out there playing with you, but it's just my 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 shoulders aren't letting me play. So yeah, that was something that I did. I did open up, um, and it was only minor, but to like Georgia and a couple people, our mum and dad in the end about how I was feeling. I was like. I don't really want to go. Um, and then that's probably why I haven't gone and watched the Sturt game since, because I was like, uh, originally I was like, I could be out there playing and um, all of that. But now, I'm, now I've gotten over it and everything. But yeah, originally I was like, that was sort of the first thing when something you've trained so hard for is just taken away from you. And yeah. How have you been able to make peace with that and, and get over it then? Yeah, that's more now. Um, I took up coaching in 2021. So... Obviously, I enjoy working with kids, um, hence why I'm starting to be a teacher and all that. So I coached in 2021, and then I got back to playing. And then I sort of just found I'd go to the gym. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed running. I enjoyed so many other things. I, I got into triathlons there for a bit. I did one of them um, and everything like that. Um, but sort of just knowing that football's not the be-all and end-all, at the end of the day, it's just a sport. Like You're running around kicking, kicking a ball. Um, it's a sport that so many people love. I l loved it. I still do. So, yeah, I slowly got over it. I think just not being there with those Sturt boys. And obviously I loved them, but not being there and seeing and what I'm missing out on. You've replaced it with, with something else because you're, yeah. you're the marathon man now. Can you tell us about this massive challenge you're taking on? Yeah, so I've worked out a day, October the 15th. I'm going to head up to Parachilna, which is, for those that don't know, Oh, 1,200 k's away from Cape Jervis. So, yeah, there you go. I'm running 1,200 kilometres along the Heysen Trail, um, aiming to get it done in about two weeks, so about 14 days. So how many k's per day? My maths isn't great. <laughs> it should equate to about roughly about 90 kilometres. So it won't just be right. running. I, I like to say 90 kilometres of movement a day. Yeah. So running, walking, crawling, whatever I have to do. But, and what's sleeping in a tent at night? Uh, so my partner's old man, he's got a camper trailer. So we're going to, well, mum and dad are going to come as the support. Georgia maybe um, up to her work and everything. So a few people might come up, be the support, tow the camper, take a couple of swags. If dad is a bit precious and mum and want to <laughs> sleep in the camper trailer, I'll sleep in the swag. If they think 90 kilometres a day is, is well enough, I'll sleep in the camper trailer. 90k a day so. is a fair <laughs> effort. So what's your aim for this? Yeah, so I'm raising money for the Beyond Blue Foundation to support like the mental health and um, everything we've just spoken about. So yeah, with what I've experienced, I thought I'm not just going to run it to or try and do it to just cause. I want to do it to raise money for something, why not raise awareness um, and everything like that. So if I can, why not raise money for the Beyond Blue Foundation? And um, I hope, well, I have set a goal. I think the Beyond Blue, I had to, if I didn't set a goal, it would have been 700. So I just set it at 50,000, but I'm sure I might not get to that, but whatever I get to is, yeah. Enough. Aim high. So, aim high, exactly. I could set it at a million and whatever I get. What do you want people get. to get out of seeing you conquer this? Yeah, I just want people to sort of everyone doesn't want I feel like some people don't want to take that next step so for me a marathon is, is still quite far then I'm like if I do a marathon and it might take three and a half hours why don't I just set off to something else that I guarantee you this ice and trail will crack me I guarantee I'll throw it in halfway through I'll be like, why did I do this but then if I think about it thinking about me feeling like crap for two weeks that's nothing compared to the amount of people that feel like crap for could be a couple of years with the mental health and everything. So, yeah, I just want people to get out of it is that you are capable of more than what you first think. I'd never once thought I'd be able to, I still might not, but never once thought I'd be able to set off on this journey of 1,200 Ks. Um, yeah, so if I can do that, then why can't sort of people reach out and ask for help? Mm. So, um, or not just me doing that, if I... Well, yeah, if I can run 1,200, why can't some people set off and start running? Or why can't you go for a job that you've always wanted to go for? Like sort of that why can't you attitude. Hmm. Love that, man. 
how do you put into words what's driving you to go to this much effort? Because from the outside looking in, that's a massive yeah. effort, right? And for someone who hasn't had a really intense personal experience with mental illness um, or, you know, lost lost someone to suicide, it's it's just an enormous crack that you're having. Yeah. So how do you describe that fire in, inside yourself and why does it mean so much to you? I have had mates of mates whose, like their mates have taken their life to suicide and seeing the effect that it has had on them. Yeah, sort of something that just sits in you. you. You just don't feel right. Something's like, what can you do? Like we're saying you can put your arm around them and ask them for help, but I don't know what it feels like to lose this person. So I've, I'll just try and do what I can. Um, keep going. On the days that I will feel bad, you'll just think, like the more I'm presuming the further I run into it, the more money will be done, will be raised. So the further I can run, then the more money raised for those that are feel like the Beyond Blue Foundation. There's many times I'm sure, unfortunately, lots of men will, or well, not just men and women, will suffer from mental health. And yeah, the more money raised and the more awareness that this Heisen Trail can generate is sort of the more help that that we'll get and um, the better support um, technology and stuff that can help those that, that are struggling. Has it already been sparking more conversations around mental health as well? Because I suppose you'd be telling a fair few people that you're doing it and they'll say, why are you doing it? Yeah. And so have you had um, that? I've had a few people like come to me and she'd be like, geez, Coop, you or I think some have called me like an idiot, like in a nice way, like, geez, you're an idiot sort of thing. Ambitious. Like, yeah. Like <laughs> why the hell would you want to do that? So it sparks some talk. Yeah, I think we've raised, what, $1,500 so far and um, well, it's probably only been out there for three weeks. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, hopefully at the end of the day, I just want the more it's talked about, the more awareness, the more awareness there is, hopefully the more money that's raised and then the more better money that be. raised, hopefully yeah. more support and the better technology and I don't know what they would do with that money, but the more that they can support, they can offer. Has your friendship group changed in how you guys are open with each other and talk about this sort of stuff and with you going and making an effort like this, how does that impact those who are really close to you, do you reckon? We have had these sort of like where you chat to someone like, hey, I think I think person A is not going so well. And in the past it was then I speak to others in that little friendship group and they're like, oh, sort of like the nah, he'll be right sort of thing. And I'm like, I've then spoke to George and I'm going, are you sure? He's like, I don't think he's all right. And then, so that's sort of when we sort of just deal with it as a me and Georgia, as a just us two. But uh, as yeah. it gets closer and as you go and do it, you'll probably be surprised by how many people reach out and uh, even those who you don't don't hear about yeah. that are impacted by it, man. So yeah. good on you for going yeah, and doing you. something that is crazy. <laughs> yeah. But I get that it needs to be and that you're you're proving a point by doing something like that to yourself and to a lot of other people. So yeah. I really admire you for doing that. How can we support your run? Um, I reckon just the big thing is just sharing it. I'm not asking for anyone's money. I'm not asking for them to donate. I think just the sharing it and um, getting it on your platforms or whatever, not even that, just take away my run. Just ask if someone's okay. Sort of just if you start with that and then it might lead to eventually getting to my run, but that's the last thing that we need to talk about. It's just, yeah, asking people if they're okay and supporting them. Um, coming for a run with me if you want while you're out there sort of sort of thing if anyone wants to jump out and I've had a few people say yeah I'll run maybe not 90k's but I'll run 10k's with you or even those I think it might go near I'm pretty much live in Harndorf pretty close I'm always there so I think it might go near Harndorf and football clubs at Harndorf so a lot of the footy boys have gone yeah I'll just come and we'll come and stand wherever it's closer to Harndorf and cheer you on like yep we'll come we'll finish at Milo with you and then there's only two more days after that so I think that'll be a special thing for me is having all those people that I've grown up with played football with um, families around the community of the hills and everything sort of coming in and 
yeah, running with me and all of that. So That's it, man. We're all in it together. Yeah. And I think that's the magic of it because you can guarantee all those people are going to be talking about it and, and why yeah. as well, which is yeah. what we need, dude. So Thank you. full credit to you. And we'll just have a link in the description that yeah. people can click on to go and give you some money. You said don't give him money, but I would yeah, say no. give him a bit of cash if you Thank can, you. man. So yeah. thanks for, uh, for sharing your story and for doing what you're doing, Coop. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. That's it for this episode. If you like what we're all about, support us by following Youngblood Men's Mental Health on Instagram and Youngblood Mental Health on TikTok. Every podcast episode is recorded in professional quality video and they're all up on our Youngblood Men's Mental Health YouTube channel. So please show some love and subscribe. Thanks to our local business supporters, Heard Financial. You can find everything there is to know about the podcast at youngbloodmensmentalhealth.com. And most importantly, please share these stories with anyone in your life who needs to know they're not alone. We're all in this together. Catch you next time.